Hey everybody, today we got a monitor. This is, oh, what model is it? It's a ViewSonic VX2263 SMHL W. This just came back from a customer and it's quite a nice little monitor. I, I got two of them and I want to see if I can fix them to uh, use on my own desk. It says broken screen on it, but it's not actually a smash screen. The issue with it is you plug it in and none of the LEDs come on. Uh, you know, it's not the common thing where you get the power LEDs, but the backlight, you know, comes on and flickers off. There's literally nothing happening on this, so there seems to be something wrong with the power supply going into the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back off this. There's only one board in this monitor, and I'm going to uh, check out the board on that and just see if we can work out why this is not coming on. This is the main board for the ViewSonic monitor that we're looking at. Um, there is only one board as the power is an external power adapter. So I verified with my multimeter that there is 19 volts DC on the power adapter and we have it plugged in and I'm going to start taking some voltage measurements. So we need to have our voltmeter in volts DC in the 20 volt range and I'm placing my black probe to ground and I'm going to start taking some measurements with my red probe. So here's my red probe. The first check we need to make sure is that the 19 volts on the power adapter is making it onto the motherboard just in case there's a break in the DC jack. If it happens quite a bit if somebody knocks off it, it can break the connection. So I place my red probe here and we've got 19 volts at that point. So I'm going to mark that as 19 volts right here. So the first component it hits when it gets onto the motherboard is this zero ohm resistor right here. So what I want to check is that there is 19 volts on here also. So I'll place my probe there and we are getting nine vol 19 volts at this point also. So th the next trick is to make sure that we follow that track. And as we see here, it splits off into two paths. Okay, so we've got path one that goes off through this fuse here. I know that's a fuse because it's BF1. And a second part brings the 19 volts down this line right here and seemingly onto this capacitor. Now, what I'm gonna do for the moment is I'm gonna keep focused on this path right here. And the next check I need to do is, I just wanna make sure that there's no break in the track here. It looks, obviously, that it's perfect, but just to make sure that there's 19 volts on the other side of, uh, on the near side of the fuse. So I place my probe right here again and the voltage measurement I get right here is 19 volts also. So we're good right up to this point. So the next check, obviously, is to go to the other side of the fuse and make sure that that 19 volts is also there. So when I place my probe right here on the other side of the fuse, it turns out that there is 0 volts on this side right here. So it looks like we have a bad fuse. I'll just mark that in there as 0 volts. So 19 volts is coming in through the 0 ohm resistor onto this path here and then it's not making it through this fuse here and through the magic of technology I'm able to remove that, uh, remove that fuse and the question is what to do next so most people would just replace the fuse but the difficulty with that is if there's a short on the other side the fuse is just going to blow straight away so what we want to do is try whatever means we can to verify that there's not a short there uh, to prevent that fuse from blowing again. That's what I'm going to do next. To test for a short after the fuse, we need to go to voltage injection. So I get my DC power supply, I set it to 19 volts DC and set a current limit of 500 milliamps. And what I'm going to do then is place my black probe to a ground and then place my red probe to wherever I want to inject my 19 volts with the 500 milliamp limit. So I place my probe right here after where the fuse was and what I found when I injected here was first of all it didn't max out at 500 milliamps so there's no immediate short on this line. What it did do was it drew 40 milliamps and then went down almost immediately to 1. So it seemed to me as if some sort of secondary circuit was trying to power on, recognize that something was wrong and then shut off. Every time I placed the probe back to it, it would do that. So um, I, I think that there's a fault further down the line, but there's certainly no short at this point. So I'm going to replace that fuse and then troubleshoot further. With our fuse now replaced, we're back to measuring. 
So I'm going to switch my multimeter to volts DC again, turn the power on and get my red probe and place it to the other side of the fuse and we now measure let me zoom in just a little bit we now measure at this point that we have 19 volts okay so we're good through the fuse and the fuse hasn't blown so from this point it comes across here and onto this inductor so I'm going to measure here and we measure 19 volts on this inductor as well so then on the other side of the inductor very very unlikely that an inductor will uh, blow but just to be comprehensive I'm measuring here as well so we've got 19 volts on this point right here as well there is a diode here as you probably noticed I see somebody with their hand up down the back uh, that diode is actually fine um, if it was shorted we wouldn't certainly have our 19 volts here anyway but the, I've measured that with the power off in diode mode and it's fine so we can just ignore this it's not causing the fault from here the 19 volts comes across to this MOSFET right here. I measured right at this pin and there's 19 volts right here. So what should happen is when the gate, which is the pin right here, is high, that should turn this MOSFET on and our 19 volts should come from here to our source. Let me just show you that on the data sheet for that MOSFET. So this is our MOSFET right here. So this is our drain, which corresponds to this right here. This is our gate, which corresponds to this right here. And this is our source, which is this one right here. So what happens with these, these are a very simple device. They're just basically a, a, a voltage or current controlled switch that the drain and the source are connected if the gate is switched on. What I can see here when I measure on the other side is that there is zero volts right here let me just mark that in so what that tells me is for some reason this end channel MOSFET is not switching on and that seems to be the reason why we are not getting any power to this this chip is at uh, this chip and this part of the circuit is close to the LED uh, output right here and I checked that chip and that certainly is the LED driver. So we have an issue with our 19 volts. It's been blocked from entering this circuit because the gate is not turning it on. So the question is, why is that not happening? There was no 19 volts getting to the other side of the MOSFET. I decided that I would inject 19 volts myself and see what happened. So with my DC power supply on 19 volts with a 500 milliamp limit, I placed my black probe to a ground here and I placed my red power probe to uh, the source of the MOSFET. Just to reiterate here, these are my power injection probes. I use the same probes for injection as I do for measurement, so I just want to make sure that we're not confusing that. But I'm using these not for measurement right now. I'm using these to inject power from my DC power supply. So with my black probe on ground and my red probe on the source of this MOSFET, injecting 19 volts with a 500 milliamp limit, uh, it drew the full 500 milliamps. So I increased that to 1 amp and it drew the full one amp as well also so i su suspected that there may be like a low resistance in some part of this circuit and that something might be heating up so i touched around it with my hand and when i touched around uh the circuit as i was injecting 19 volts with about 2500 milliamps i felt that these two components here were getting very warm so i decided to take away my power injection and remove these two components from the board. So just to point about once again, with 19 volts being injected, these two components, resistors, were getting very, very warm. So I took the two of these off the board. The two resistors that I removed from the board were two of these, which are R220 SMD resistors. Now it's only when I took these off the board that I sort of realized that these are actually very low value resistors. So they would appear as a short with my uh, multimeter in diode mode or with voltage injection. Um, 0 0.22 ohms is you know, gonna effectively appear as a short. So that's the reason that 
the current was going through them and that they were heating up not because necessarily that they were faulty however when I did have them off the board I measured them and they were measuring as 0 0.6 ohms so what I did was I had two of these spare so I replaced the two on the monitor with two brand new R220 resistors and when I did that the monitor magically came to life again now I am conscious that I somehow seemingly have come across the right answer by using the wrong method. You know, the voltage injection on that was obviously going to heat up those two components, even if they were working. So I don't know if it's just luck that they were the two components that heated up and they were the ones that were stopping the monitor from starting. Um, but I had seen it before on an LED circuit where two of those similar type of resistors um, were faulty. And that is, you know, that's what I replaced on that monitor also. So that's what fixed this monitor for me. Those two R220 resistors, I replaced the two of those. And when I did that, I plugged it in and immediately the backlight came on. And I'm going to show that now. So this is my ViewSonic monitor put back together again. So I'm pressing the power button. And there we go, ViewSonic. I don't have anything plugged into it, so it's just going to say waiting for a signal here. But that's it back working again. Um, just replacing those two resistors seemed to do the job. Obviously, I got a bit lucky on that one. But there it is. I'll take the look wherever I can get it. So please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments for me, please leave them down below. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.